What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the all new Microsoft Fabric. Now, Microsoft is just on a roll. They're announcing things left and right. And one of the new things that they just announced is something called Microsoft Fabric. Now, Microsoft is calling this a unified data analytics platform, but honestly, it covers a lot of different areas like data engineering, data science, data governance, all in one place. I myself have used Azure for many years, so I'm really familiar with the Azure ecosystem. So this got me really interested right when I saw it. Now there's a lot to it. There's a lot of things that they're changing and updating and it looks really, really good. But before we jump into anything, I'm gonna show you the one minute trailer that Microsoft actually released that talks a lot about what Microsoft Fabric actually is. Introducing Microsoft Fabric, a unified data analytics platform. One product, one experience, one architecture, one business model. Unified data is stored in one lake, a SaaS data lake for the entire organization. Data is integrated and stored in an open format, allowing one copy to be used to train machine learning models, visualize data, and run SQL queries on the lake and data warehouse. A unified experience brings together all the tools data professionals need, pipelines for orchestrating data movement, experiments for training machine learning models, semantic models for defining key metrics, and much more. And for business users, Fabric brings together data for collaborating and doing ad hoc analysis in Microsoft 365. Unified governance, security, and compliance is built in for all your data. And with Copilot for Microsoft Fabric, AI helps everyone be more productive. Whether it's writing SQL statements, building reports, or setting up automations based on triggers. All your data, all your teams, all in one place. This is Microsoft Fabric. So that looks pretty awesome. And at the beginning, they called it a unified data analytics platform. I don't know if that's exactly how I'd categorize it. It really is an end-to-end -end solution for a lot of people. Just in that quick video, we hit on a lot of things. And I'm gonna show you a lot of things that weren't in that video as well. Some of the things that I am the most excited about. So let's start from the ground up with how you're gonna be able to access your data. So you're gonna be able to access your data in just about any cloud platform, whether it's Azure or AWS, Google Cloud Platform, or another cloud service. Now this comes with a big change to their data architecture, something they're calling One Lake, and I'm gonna to get to that in just a little bit, but they're doing this with something called shortcuts. It's gonna allow you to access your data wherever it is and query it without having to migrate that data over from another cloud service. That in and of itself is gonna be a huge upgrade, something that every large company deals with. It is a huge issue. And there's a lot of really small third-party companies, some of which I've worked with in the past, that solve this issue, but Microsoft is gonna have this natively in Microsoft Fabric. Now the data is gonna be read in as a virtual file from those cloud providers, but if the data is already stored in a Parquet format, you'll be able to read it in as a virtual table and actually query that data. That Parquet format is actually really important in this whole One Lake architecture that they've built. Now that really leads me into the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which is just One Lake as a whole. They've made some really big changes of how they're gonna actually store their data. Within One Lake, they're gonna store all of their data in something called an open Delta Parquet format. This means that no matter what service or tool you're using within Microsoft Fabric, it's all gonna be using the same data in One Lake, all in that same open Delta Parquet format. So every service engine is gonna be able to access the exact same data because it's all standardized in One Lake. Microsoft says that they chose the Parquet format because it's really efficient at storing a lot of data, and it's also really flexible so it can be used with a lot of analytics tools. Something else that I wanted to show you that they didn't talk about in that promo video is that you can access this data basically anywhere. So I have OneDrive and I have multiple computers and devices and I can save something on this computer and then I can go onto this computer, log into my OneDrive and I'll be able to access it on this computer. One Lake is essentially gonna have the exact same thing where you can put it into One Lake and then you can access it via One Lake in your file explorer. Now this by itself is really cool, but it gets even better because like we were looking at before with those shortcuts, you can access data from a different cloud provider within your One Lake in File Explorer. So you don't have to go to your Amazon S3 bucket. You can just go to your One Lake that's connected to your S3 bucket and view it in your File Explorer, which is just, it's kind of mind blowing. Now, not only can you view files and open files, you can also upload files via your One Lake and File Explorer. So you don't have to go into One Lake and log in and upload something. You can just go into your One Lake and File Explorer, drag over the file, drop it in there, and it's gonna upload into One Lake. Honestly, to me, this seems like one of the coolest things, although it's kind of a small feature, but 
it just would make life so much easier, which when you're working with this kind of stuff, that's really what you're looking for. Just ease of use, not really having to log in and do all these things. They're just making it really seamless. And that's honestly what it's all about. Next, let's take a look at their AI integrations that they're gonna have within Microsoft Fabric. First, they're gonna have LLM built in. So you can just chat with your data, especially if you're writing Python or you're doing some modeling with data science. This is gonna be really handy. It's very much like using ChatGPT within Microsoft Fabric. They're also gonna have Copilot in there, which they're basically gonna be integrating across all of their services and all of their products through the entire company. So this isn't a huge surprise, but Copilot is gonna be really great for writing things like SQL queries and just asking questions about your data. So when I was digging into Microsoft Fabric and just really trying to figure out everything that it does, these are some of the biggest things that I saw. Honestly, there are a lot of really great updates and great ideas. We'll see how they actually work once we're able to get in there and start testing it out. But it looks really, really good in my opinion. So honestly, they're not really reinventing the wheel here. I mean, a lot of these products are already standalone products, but what they are doing is they're bringing everything together in a really standardized way, which is honestly just a fantastic thing for the end user. So someone like me who's used Azure for many years, I can attest that you would have a lot of data in silos that you'd have to do a lot of data migration for, and something like this might solve that problem. Now, again, we have to wait and see how it actually works, how well it works, but if it works well, this could solve a lot of headaches around getting all your data into one place. So overall, this looks like a really great product. I'm super excited to get my hands on it. I wish they had this three or four years ago when I was using Azure a ton, but if all these things come into fruition, if they all work really well, I think we'll be seeing a lot of people switching or using Microsoft Fabric in the next one or two or even three years. We'll see a lot of companies start to use it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I try to keep you guys updated on a lot of these new data analytics related stuff because these new technologies are just rolling out here and I'm just trying to keep you up to date so you can know what to learn next or things that you might want to learn in the future. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video.